There we go. So good afternoon. I feel like I haven't taught for ages, but it's only because I didn't teach yesterday. So here I am, and we are going to start with a breathing practice. Partly the same as Monday afternoon, but then I'm going to add something um, that we didn't do on Monday. And then we're going to come to part two of the Pabamukdasana series. So these are the traditional energy blocking series, and we're doing the anti-gastric um, one today. So I hope you haven't all just eaten a massive lunch, or I hope it was long, long ago enough um, to feel okay for you. So if you'd like to come to an easy seat um, on the floor, on a chair is fine for the first part of the practice. You can be sitting wherever you like, and the next part of the practice, the whole thing is on your back. So it's all quite easy. I'm taking time to find your seat, find your sitting bones, wriggle around a little bit to get rid of any residual tension until you're ready to become still for a while. If you like, you could come to chin mudra, which is with the thumbs and the forefingers, the tips just lightly touching, elbows underneath the armpits, and possibly closing your eyes, or at least looking down with a soft gaze. And taking a few moments to land, taking a few moments to arrive. Feeling into the body. Feeling into the base of the body so that you feel really connected, really rooted like a rock. In touch with the surface beneath you, holding you. And without looking for any particular posture or perfection in particular, just simply follow your attention up the spine, possibly relaxing your shoulders a little away from the ears. Maybe a slight lift out through the top of your head. Noticing the quality of your breath, the simplicity of breathing this afternoon. Before we come to any intervention in the breath, simply noticing what it feels like to breathe or what it feels like to allow your body to breathe you without intervention with no effort at all. Awake to the afternoon, awake to the atmosphere in your room at home. And just noticing if you are holding any tension in the face any tension around the eyes, ears, jaws, tongue. And wishing yourself some softness around the face so you feel the tissues around your eyes softening. Maybe your jaws almost slightly unhinging. For a moment, dropping your attention into the space of your heart, the Hridaya Kash, 
the space behind your breastbone, right in the center of your chest, not your biological heart, but the subtle heart of the energy body. And take a look in there, take a look and see what you notice. Sometimes it can be surprising. It's not part of our body we attend to very much. Sometimes there's a texture or a color, an emotion. A certain timbre, quality of feeling in the heart space. And from this quality, from whatever you notice here, asking yourself the question of what you really need from this practice this afternoon. What's brought you to the mat? And it doesn't need to be a complicated answer because your heart space will tell you quite simply, even without words. It's an intuitive sense of what you need. And if what you need is to dedicate your practice to a loved one, then that's what you do. Or maybe you dedicate the practice to self-compassion a little bit of self-love, care. And taking a moment to sit with your sankalpa, to sit with your intention for this class. Breathe with it, feel with it. Feel the room with it. And then gently open your eyes. And we'll come to that nine part breath that we've been practicing now quite regularly. I'm looking at the names on the screen. I think you've all done this with me. So let's hope the familiarity is a useful thing. So we start by bringing the thumbs across the base of the fingers and wrapping our fingers around the thumbs and releasing our hands down to the legs. Just taking a moment to feel the hands here. I'm going to take it really slow today. And then releasing the right forefinger and lifting it up close to your right nostril, but not closing it yet. And coming to a sense of the breath. So coming back to the sense of the air in your nostrils. As you take a full breath in and a lovely long breath out, maybe watching the exhalation fade away at the end. And then take a full breath in. And close your right nostril and breathe smooth and steady out of the left nostril. Very delicate and smooth. And then release the right nostril and breathe in through both. And close the right nostril and breathe out through the left again. So this isn't about forcing or pushing anything. And one more time, breathing in through both. Closing the right nostril and breathing out through the left. And releasing your right hand down at the end of that out breath. And taking a natural breath in and out. And releasing your left forefinger, bringing it up close to the left nostril and taking a full breath in. Closing your left nostril, breathing out through the right. Lovely, smooth and steady. Release the finger and breathe in through both. Close the left and breathe out smooth and steady through the right. Breathing in again through both. 
closing the left and breathing out steady through the right. And releasing your left hand down and taking a normal breath in and out. And with your next breath in, taking a full breath in and really noticing the sensation of air in your nostrils. And take a lovely fluid long breath out, noticing everything, how the breath moves your body. And taking another full breath in. And a long breath out. And then one more time, a full breath in through both. And a long breath out. Just for a moment sitting, your eyes could be closed or open. And noticing how soft you are in the belly. Notice the gentle rise and fall of your belly with the breath, but without any kind of pushing. And then beginning to push into your left fist so you straighten into the left arm and take a breath in. And as you breathe out, come down over the right knee, pushing the left leg away. Lovely long breath out. And as you breathe in, come to the top. And now push into your right hand and breathe out, come down over the left knee, pushing into that right leg. Maybe you feel the hip. And then breathe in full up to the top. Pushing into the left hand, breathe out, come down to the right. And then breathing in, come up to the top. And breathing out, come all the way down to the left. Really push into that right leg. And then breathing in, last round, come to the top. Push into the left leg and breathe out down to the right. Breathing in up to the top. And pushing into the right hand, right leg, I mean, breathe out down to the left. And then breathing in up to the top. And as you breathe out, take a full breath out and notice your exhalation fading away at the end of the breath. And take a couple of breaths. This is really tuning you into the quality of the breath. And then taking a full breath in, I'm going to do one to demonstrate, then we can do three together. And on the breath out, <sighs> You shake your whole body as you come down and you exhale with a really big sigh, as noisy as you can, even feeling a rasping in the back of the throat. So three times, breathing in. <laughs> Feel everything shaking, breathing in. <laughs> Last time, taking a breath in. <laughs> and shake it all out and then coming back up again and taking a full breath in and a long breath out and again watching your exhale fade away at the end into the space around you eyes closed or open taking a few breaths to simply notice the residue the after effect of this practice it's really a cleansing preparatory practice for more complicated breathing or physical work. And then if you'd like to open your eyes and if you're sitting cross-legged, change the cross of your legs. If you're sitting on a chair, just have a little move around. So we're gonna to come to um, Prana Mudra, which in fact is a breathing energy practice that I've done with you on previous mornings. Um, it's, it's very traditional, it's taken out of this book, Asana Pranayama Mudra Bandha. The Sh um, Shivananda School of Yoga. And um, 
or Satyananda rather, but although it's not really, it's a practice that goes, comes before them. Um, it's just very well documented in that book. And it's really an invocation of energy. So we're going to use the breath to lift energy from the root chakra, from the muladhara, all the way up the body so that we come to an, a sense of opening lightness as we open our hands out. And at, a, at a, an energetic level, that's very interesting to follow that lift and then bring it back down again. But actually, we're also working to simply expand the breath. This is a breathing practice. If you're interested in the more esoteric, subtle dimensions of the energy body, see what you notice. See what you notice anyway. So we start in Bhairava Mudra with the left hand, with the right hand, excuse me, placed on top of the left, lightly lying in your lap, the tips of the thumb, thumbs touching. And we're going to come back to settling. I know we've already done this, but I would like you to close your eyes if that's fine for you. And we're going to focus on three parts of the body before we come into the moving breath. I'd like you to see how soft you feel or how soft you can encourage yourself to become in the lower belly. So the breath becomes to feel like a very easy, smooth pulse in the belly, out and in. And then you can also spend a few moments at the same time as feeling the softness in the belly, feeling really heavy and soft in the hands and the arms. Really bring your attention to the hands, the arms and your belly for a few moments. And noticing the simple, steady stream of your breath, which might feel a lot lighter, a lot more delicate now after the nine part breath we did. And then from here, sliding your hands apart. So they're facing in towards the belly. Fingertips aren't touching, but they're pointing in towards each other. Now this breath takes practice, so you don't want to feel like you're already straining the inhalation. So find your pace and don't worry if it doesn't work straight away. And just take a normal breath in and out to begin with. And now following the breath in, lifting up from your lower belly to your solar plexus and with the same breath in, lifting up to your heart space, to your throat. And as you come up to the space of your eyebrows, open out your palms and even lean back and look up a little bit as you hold the breath, possibly feeling lightness, a spaciousness, not straining. And then slowly, very mindfully, bring your hands back together at the eyebrows, down to the throat, the solar plexus and the lower belly. And when you're back down, take a normal breath in and out. We're going to do this four more times. Invocation of energy. And then beginning to breathe in, lifting from the lower belly to the solar plexus, the heart, the throat. Feel the lift, the eyebrow center. And then gently opening out, palms facing up. Maybe looking up and holding the breath in for a moment just to notice what you feel here. Some people might feel a, a real radiance. And then beginning to close it down, drawing the energy back into yourself, to the eyebrow centre, the throat, the heart centre, the solar plexus, and down to the lower belly and take a normal breath in and out in between. This is called prana mudra. And then gathering your in breath again, drawing it up. When you come to the eyebrow center, opening out. Some of you might prefer to do this with eyes closed, to really drop inwards 
And when you hold your breath, don't strain, don't try and burst your lungs. When you're ready, gathering that energy to, to draw it all the way back down, all the way. You can hover a little moment by the eyebrows, the throat, the heart center, the solar plexus, and then deep down in the belly. And taking a normal breath in and out. We take two more. And the idea with the moving up the energy body like this is that we're moving up through levels of increasing subtlety from the, the sense of a rootedness, a rock earthiness, all the way up to the etheric, to space. So taking a breath in as you gradually lift up to the Manipura, the solar plexus, to the Anahata, the heart space, the Vishuddhi, the throat. And as you come to the Anya, in the middle of your eyebrows, open out and feel that radiance maybe. And if it's not there, it really doesn't matter. You're still breathing. And then in your own time, slowly come back down again, very slowly hovering at each of those energy centers, chakras. And when you're down at the bottom, take a breath in and out. And we'll take our last breath together. And this time I won't speak, we'll just do it when you're ready. And when you've finished replacing your hands back in Bhairava Mudra with the right palm placed gently over the left, the tips of your tongue, the thumbs meeting. And take a few natural breaths. Just to notice, just to feel. And if you chose a sankalpa, an intention for your practice, maybe now is the time to come back with it into your heart space, just for a few breaths together, in silence. And then when you're ready, opening your eyes and coming down onto your backs, please. You don't need any props or anything for this, unless you're going to need a blanket to cover yourself at the end. Coming to lying on your backs and coming straight to bringing your knees in towards you. Looking for a nice long spine so your chin is in a little bit to your chest and have a little bit of a feel out through the back of your body. So this pose is already really good for your digestion. You're massaging into your abdominal organs without even really trying. So take a few breaths here, maybe rocking around a little bit on your lower back. But mostly feeling the contact between your thighs and your abdomen. And then taking both hands around the right knee and sliding the left leg away. Let's take this really lovely and slowly, easily. You might like to circle around a little bit in the right knee to feel into the right hip socket. I'm taking my knee a little bit out to the right, but also bringing it a little bit over the body. And why don't you have a go just pushing through your left heel? So you're extending out through the left heel. And this way you get a nice stretch in the psoas muscle, this muscle from the inner thigh coming up through the pelvis to the lower spine. Take a few more breaths here. And 
And then holding your knee still and take a full breath in. And on the breath out, lift your head towards your knee. Take a breath in here. And then breathe out lightly, lower your head to the floor. We'll do that two more times. Take a breath in and use the breath out to lift your head and knee towards each other. And take a breath in when you're here and then breathe out. Release the head down. Take a final breath in. And then breathe out, lift your head towards the knee. Take a breath in here. And then lower your head down to the floor. Lovely. And then slide the right knee away, right leg away, excuse me. And take a moment to feel the difference between the two sides. And then bring your left knee in towards you. And take a little bit of time to move around, first of all, in that left hip socket. And if it feels right for you, pushing through that right heel, engaging that leg. You might be bringing the knee right over the body. You might be taking it out to the left. So just stirring around, feeling your way in the left hip socket here. Very tender. And then holding your knee in towards you and taking a full breath in. And on the breath out, lifting your head and the knee towards each other. And taking a breath in here. And as you breathe out, lowering your head. So it doesn't matter if your right leg lifts off the floor a little bit. In fact, that's completely fine. Take another breath in. And as you breathe out, head and knee come towards each other. Take a breath in here. And then breathe out, lower your head. Take a final breath in. And then breathing out, head and knee come towards each other. And take a breath in here. And then gently lower your head, slide the left foot away. And take a moment to feel the whole body now. Feel your bones, your muscles, your skin. Feel the floor beneath you. And then we take a variation on that pose, which is a wind relieving pose by bending both knees up and bringing the right knee in towards you again. So it's just a slightly different angle by bending up the left leg. And take a breath in here and on the breath out again, head towards the knee. And breathe in when you're here and breathe out, release. Take another breath in and as you breathe out, lift your head towards your knee without straining the neck. Take a breath in. And breathe out, gently release. And we'll take one more, breathing in. Breathing out, lifting your head towards your knee. Take a breath in. And then on the breath out, lowering your head and your foot at the same time. Feeling the body. And then bringing your left knee in towards you. And take a full breath in. And as you breathe out, head and knee towards each other. And then breathe in when you're up here. And breathe out, gently release. Maybe you can feel the massage on your abdomen. I definitely can. Breathing in. And as you breathe out, head to knee. Take another breath in. And then release your head and your knee. And we'll take one more breath in. And breathe out, head to knee. Breathe in here and then lightly release your head and your foot and slide both feet away again to simply feel the whole body, the whole body on the mat. Maybe noticing the quality of your breath. Maybe noticing if your mood has changed, if the sensations in the body have changed. And taking a breath in and on the breath out, bringing both knees in towards you again. Now, some people will be able to reach the feet, but don't feel you have to. You can hold on to the lower legs. And take a breath in, and on the breath out, lift your head towards your knee. And for five breaths, let's 
hold ourselves in, really packed in like a tight little package. If it strains the neck, then obviously release your head down. Otherwise, taking a few more breaths, squeezing yourself in. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. One more breath in. And then releasing the feet down to the floor and your head to the floor. And taking a moment to feel the softness maybe now in your belly. Maybe a softness around the front of your hips. And we're going to start some of those cycling movements. So both feet start flat on the floor. And you're going to begin to cycle very slowly with the right leg. So bringing the knee in towards you, straightening the leg. Not touching the floor with the heel. And then bringing the knee back in towards you. So you find your rhythm. I wouldn't take this too fast. It's much more interesting to really feel into the leg, feel into the quality of the movement. Is this smooth for you? Or is it a bit jittery? Can you feel the skin? Can you feel the back of your leg? How's the breath? For me, these Power Mukdasanas, all three series of them, are more of a meditation in movement. You really get to know your body in quite a lot of detail without too much effort. Making the next one your last one before we reverse the direction. So placing the foot down and then sliding the foot away and lifting the leg up high and bringing the knee in towards you and pushing it away. So you're back pedaling with the right leg, taking whatever rhythm works for you. And breathing easy, trying not to clench up the upper body in any way, really soft in the face, around the chest and the neck, throat, collarbones. And can you feel the air you're moving through? Let's take one more like this. Before lightly placing the right foot down. And just noticing how you might feel different on the two sides of the body. And then we begin with the left leg, draw the knee in towards you. Maybe kiss the ceiling with the left big toe. Draw the leg down towards the floor before you bend the knee in again. Take your time. Really feeling into the left leg now and how it might differ from the right leg. And breathe. What do you notice about the rest of your body as you take the simple cycling movement? Next time your leg comes down towards the floor, we're going to change the direction. So this time lifting the leg up, then bending the knee and pushing it away. Finding your own rhythm. And we're not synchronizing the breath with these movements. This is more about just breathing naturally and freely as you allow yourself to notice the quality of your movement in space and in the body. And then making the next full cycle your last one. And placing both feet down, feeling the body. And we're now going to pedal with both legs but as if you're riding a bike. So you're not doing them both, to, you're doing them both together, but staggered. So beginning to cycle with both legs. And you know, it'll depend on your core strength. We're working into core abdominal muscles here, how high and how low your feet come. You might be wanting to be really quite delicate here, or you might find you can take the full range of movement. Breathe. And it's quite deceptive. This is, I find, I'm finding this quite tiring around the, my inner thighs. Is it about you? Can you reverse the direction? And it's quite tempting if things get a bit tough to hold the breath. 
Are you able to breathe freely? And I know Will is doing this upstairs and he's already take, done a 30 mile ride today, I think, on a real bicycle. So I don't know how he's finding this. Lovely, and then slowing it down and allowing both feet to rest on the floor as you just come to feel the body. Feeling the breath. How soft are you in your lower belly? Now we come to do um, this movement with both legs together, but stuck together as if you were a mermaid cycling. So bring both knees in together, both feet up towards the ceiling, both legs towards the floor, but it's not a full abdominal work, so you bend the knees again. And take a few breaths. Obviously, if you want to work your abdominal muscles more, you'd hover your feet close to the floor before bending again. But I would take your hands behind your head just to relieve strain in the neck. Even lifting your head a little if you need to, so you're not straining any part of the body. And this feels like work, doesn't it? Or is it just me? This is quite hard. And then next time your feet come close to the floor, let's reverse the direction. So let's lift the legs, knees in towards us, push the legs away. And take a few rounds, slowing it down if you need to. Just noticing how this feels. This goes deep into the abdomen. We have three layers of core muscles in the abdomen. This goes right deep down right down into the navel. Let's take one more, inhale. Beautiful, and then exhale, dropping your feet, sliding them away, arms by your sides, just to rest a moment. Notice the breath now, sensations in the body now. And we're going to start circling with the right leg. I would keep your palms facing down because it gives a little bit of leverage, a little bit of stability, but see how you get on. You're going to lift the right leg and begin to draw little circles with the heel. Breathing steadily, noticing if there are any parasitic tension further up the body. And I'm going to leave you to decide how big, how expansive you want your circles to be. They might want, you might want them to be quite small and localized, but you might end up swinging your leg right across to the right, right over the body to the left. It's quite freeing for the whole of that hip socket, but it's also quite um, tiring and it can crackle a little bit. My hip sockets always crackle when I do this. I can't go the full way because I'm against the wall. And then reversing the direction of your circles. I would start small and then build it up. Breathe. Very, very strengthening for this big muscle, the psoas muscle. You can feel it in the inner thigh and right up to the lower spine and then slowing that down. Oh, that's hard. And allowing the right leg to rest a moment, really allow it to rest, feel the whole body release here. And then when you're ready, lifting the left leg a little way off the floor and beginning those little circles in one direction. Start small and then maybe get a little bit bigger. Maybe get a lot bigger, whatever you feel you need. I'm not saying that big means it's better. Please, please try not to hold your breath. This can happen easily this kind of core work. When we did this the other morning, someone wrote in, or I think they phoned me actually, I don't know if you're on in this class now, and said how it absolutely helped her digestion. Something she usually has problems with and she felt completely different, isn't that brilliant? And then reversing the direction of the circles. If I speak, I forget, I get a bit carried away. Reversing the circles of the left leg, starting small and only getting bigger if that feels right for you. 
but we're really stirring around, noticing any crackling. Well, we hear mine. I left it, it was really crackling. And then slowing that down until eventually the left leg rests on the floor, really soft and heavy. Let's take a moment to rest and feel the body here. Breathing right down into the belly. And we're going to take two forms of Navasana, two forms of boat pose. First of all, very gentle. I want you to lift your head to look at your feet. Lift your feet a little way off the floor, just a few centimetres, maybe your arms are by your side. And see if you can breathe here and notice the effort in your abdomen and not the effort in your head and your throat. You're trying to flatten your lower back towards the floor if you can. I know it's quite hard. One more breath in and then gently release. Take a breath here. Feel the release. And then take a full breath in and we come up higher this time. Your arms are out in front of you, you're looking at your feet. My, feet. my heels are about 40, 50 centimetres off the floor. And take a few breaths, really energising through the toes and the fingertips. Hold it, I know this is hard. Hold it, hold it, and then gently release down. And immediately take your hands behind your head. Bend your knees up. You can take your feet as wide apart as you like and we'll take some very gentle twists. So let's inhale to the front and as you exhale, drop both knees to the left as your head goes to the right. Nice and lazy and then bring your head and your knees back to neutral as you breathe in. And on the breath out, drop your knees to the right, your head to the left. And can you take a few rounds in your own time? This is really um, an antidote, a counter treatment, if you like, after that core work, which can place quite a lot of strain on the lower back. So if you're feeling that strain, which I hope you're not too much, but you're looking after yourselves, this is a way of just rinsing through the spine, the lower back, the whole of the pelvis as well. Take a while, it should be quite nice. Always taking your head in the opposite direction. And if you come over to one side and you want to stay for a couple of breaths, then do. Don't have to keep that dynamic movement going. But if you stay on one side, make sure you stay on the other. Lovely, 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 lovely. And bringing your knees up to the top. And releasing your head, arms down by your sides. Taking a moment to breathe, to feel the body. Particularly noticing how you feel in, around the front of the pelvis, the belly, around the navel. And then taking your fingers behind your knees. And if you're able to, having a little bit of rock from head to tail. A little bit of a rock from head to tail. So it's just a bit of a massage. If this just doesn't work for you, it's absolutely fine to rock from side to side. Let's take a few. So good for the muscles up and down the spine. And then lowering yourself back down. And bringing your knees in towards your chest, but taking your hands behind your head again. So we're gonna do a little bit of cross work. We're gonna take the opposite elbow to the opposite knee, that's the way we're gonna come. So take a breath in. And as you breathe out, push the left heel away as so you straighten the left leg and bring the left elbow to the right knee. Bring the head back, bring both knees together. Exhale, straighten the right leg, right elbow to the left knee. Can you keep going? Inhale to neutral. Exhale, cross. Inhale to neutral. We're really getting to the oblique muscles, the side abdominals. 
as well as massaging our internal organs. Always inhale back to the center and exhale cross. Never ever feel you've got to bring your head so far that your neck strains. Please just allow your head to hang in your hands rather than reaching anywhere with your chin or forehead. Let's take one more on each side. And then gently knees in towards your chest, lower your head down to the floor. And then with your feet together, your knees out, lower your feet down towards the floor. And take a moment here, just to feel the softness across the front of your pelvis. Maybe the softness of your inner thighs and your belly. The reclining butterfly pose. Noticing the soles of your feet together. And what's nice here is just to simply rock around a little bit. So I'm not going to over instruct this, just rocking from side to side. You can lift your head if you need to. So that your arms become a little bit involved or it's quite nice just to lie back with your head in your hands and allow your legs to rock from side to side. This is a releasing movement after quite a lot of, I would say that's quite hard work, the sequence. It's much harder than the empty rheumatic exercises. It has a completely different function. Keep rocking gently from side to side. Until you come to stillness and just slide your hands away from behind your head and down by your sides, palms facing down. We're gonna come into a little bit of a moving back bend with the legs and butterfly. So sunflower pose, this is called. And I really want you to be gentle. I don't want you to lift into the biggest back bend you've ever done. But you are gonna press the outer edges of your feet into the floor. So on a breath in, as you float your arms over your head, lift the whole of the pelvis, your bottom into the air. Feel the opening, it should feel quite nice, I think. And then slowly, with control, breathe out, bring your arms back and lower the back of the pelvis down again. We'll do four more in your own time, breathing in to lift. And breathing out to lower. Three more, breathing into it. Breathing out to lower. Two more. Breathing into lift. Breathing out to lower. And on your final lift, you have the option of staying up for a few breaths, just to notice what this feels like, but don't feel you have to. I'm going to stay up for five breaths. Keep lifting, keep pushing into the feet. I'm really breathing into the front of the body. Notice the front of the pelvis, the thighs. It's quite hard. Beautiful space it gives you. One more breath in. And then bone by bone. Bringing your spine back down to the mat. Gently settling down, taking a moment. Breathing into the belly. And bringing your knees together. And having a little bit of a, a rock around now on your lower back. Just very gentle massage. As we've come to the end of that Pawamukdasana sequence anti-gastric. Lovely little rolling around in one direction and then rolling around in the opposite direction. So my feeling is with this Power Mukdasana series two, it's quite different from series one because when we work into the joints like the fingers and the wrists, it's less tiring and you could do that for many, you could do that for much longer. 
Whereas with the kind of work we did today, I, I think we've done just long enough. I wouldn't necessarily push yourself more than we did. So holding your knees in towards you, maybe holding your feet, maybe not, and taking a lovely full breath in, and on the breath out, pulling yourself, hugging yourself into that tight little package again. Take another breath in here, and now when you're ready, dropping your feet, sliding them away, feet are wide apart, dropping out, arms by your sides, palms facing up. It's time for relaxation. Do cover yourself with a blanket if you need to. Take time to get comfortable. Starting off your relaxation by recalling if you chose an intention, a sankalpa for your practice, and bringing that into your heart space. Bringing that very particular personal focus into your heart space and noticing how you feel in the heart. And then if it works for you, allowing your sankalpa, your intention to diffuse through the whole body, so every cell of the body has it. You can feel it right down to the tips of your toes, out through the top of your head. And then checking in with the quality of your breath. Checking in with the flow of the breath. Do you feel like it's fluid? Or maybe there's some obstruction. Do you feel that your in-breath or your out-breath is more dominant? Not that there's a right or a wrong here, it's just an awareness exercise. Do you maybe feel clearer in the right nostril or the left nostril? And how do you feel your body receive each breath? And then surrender each breath. Are you able perhaps to feel your whole body alive with the breath? Vibrant, tingling with the breath. And then allowing your attention to wander around the physical body. Noticing what this practice has brought for you, for your body. How do you feel in your hands, in your forearms, in your upper arms? In the front of your chest? In the back of your chest? In the left and the right sides of your chest? You can feel the whole of the chest cavity, inside and out. And how do you feel in your lower abdomen? Around the front of the pelvis, including the lower belly. And the back of the pelvis. And the left and the right sides. So you feel the whole of this cavity from the inside out, front, 
the back, the two sides. And how about your left leg? From your buttock and hip all the way down the upper leg, lower leg to the foot. Feeling the whole of the left leg. Maybe a tingling in the foot. And the whole of the right leg. From the buttock or in the hip all the way down the upper leg. The lower leg to the foot. Maybe feeling a tingling in the foot. And feeling your head, the back of your head resting. All sensations in the face. Your eyes, your mouth, your cheeks, your nose and your ears your throat and the very crown of your head so you feel the whole of your head in all dimensions inside and out and taking the last few moments of this relaxation to feel the whole body the whole body feel the whole body alive and vibrant, maybe heavy, maybe light. And coming to feel the whole body breathing. And you are welcome to stay here as long as you like. In about three minutes, I'm going to be starting the Hatha Flow class, and I'm going to put the screensaver on for that. If you know that you're not going to stay for that class, you might want to turn off your computer, turn off your volume, and continue to rest. And I thank you very much for joining me this afternoon.